Hi, I'm Rick Kaufman, Technical Marketing Engineer for the Technical Enablement Team here at Aruba Networks. Now, this episode, episode eight, we're going to dive into PyMongo, right? So we know a little bit about Python. We want to write an application. We want to do some RESTful API stuff and talk to other REST endpoints and get data back. Maybe we want to do something with that data, like store it in a database like PyMongo or MongoDB. We're going to use PyMongo, the library, to talk to MongoDB. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to just simply get records from a Jinja2 template, and we're going to put that information into a Mongo database, and we might even get some API information and do the same. So join me in this episode, and let's get started. Thank you for watching, you seeker of knowledge. This is the Aruba RESTful Automation Series, and we're going to discuss CRUD operations. What are they, and what do I need them for? Well, in episode eight, we're going to dive into PyMongo and how we can use PyMongo in our Python script. So the CRUD acronym, what is that? It just simply means C for create a document in the MongoDB, R for read a document or multiple documents, U for updating or changing in some way the document and saving it back into the database, and D, deleting or removing that document. Now, how do we get this going, right? We want to import PyMongo into our Flash script. If you don't import PyMongo, none of this works. So if you don't have PyMongo, you can install it by saying pip3 install PyMongo. Now you own it. Now we get to use it in our script. We're going to build a dictionary here called config with the username, the password to the Mongo database, which we can find in the docker-compose.yaml file. So we'll see that too. But this last thing, server, it just says Mongo. Well, we're using Docker infrastructure here. So the other container that's running the Mongo database, the name of the container is Mongo. So we're using just container name here to link to that, to actually connect to that in another container. So we got to build a connector. We use this MongoDB. And we just use a stop format that says everything inside the parentheses, I want you to put inside the curly braces on the left side. And so we would get username, colon, password, and then at server, which would be Mongo. That's how we get the connector. We put the connector to the Mongo client. We get a client. We take the client and define a database name that we want to call our database and we put that into the letters DB. So now all the stuff we just talked about is now available every time you say DB in your script. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Import PyMongo. We're gonna create a Python dictionary of the keys that we wanna put into this Python document. And then we're gonna go ahead and assign values to those keys. So in this particular instance, I'm getting some information from an incoming form. So before this code hit, somebody filled out a form with this information. So we just capture it, make it a Python dictionary, and we use DB, there's that DB at the bottom. That means connector and all that other stuff, client, right? And database name. So that's all in the DB. And then customer is the collection, the Mongo collection of documents I wanna to talk to. And then I'm just simply going to insert one. And I'll take that entry Python dictionary and put it right there between the curly, uh, between the parentheses in that bottom line where it says entry. And that's how we insert a record or create a record and insert it. Here we're going to read, right? We're going to do the read cred operation. And then we're going to actually look for documents in the database. So here we are. I'm saying customer equals, there's db again, dot collection name, customer. And I'm just simply going to say find. And when I give it to parentheses and curly braces like this, it's going to find every document in the database. And that's how we, we get a complete query of all the documents in the database. Now, that stuff that comes back from Mongo isn't really a Python dictionary. So we have to kind of do some stuff to convert it back. And that's what this, this bottom line is doing, but we'll talk about that as well. Update. 
we use update one. But to do this, it's, it's, it has two parts. It has a query and it has new values. And a query is just I'm saying I'm looking for some rec some document in the database that has a key in it called number, and I want to find this specific number, right? So three. So it will go look in the database, find the document that has a key called number and the value set to three. So that's my query. I'm saying go find that record. And then the new values, uh, these are the new values I want to place into that record. So I'm using this dollar set with a dictionary of that information. And then we just simply um, do the set when we put it all together with the update one and we say my query new values in that bottom line. So again, db.customer update one. So I'm specifically saying go find the record with number three in the key and the value, our number in the key and the value set to three and change its name, phone, and email. That's what we're doing. That's how we update a record. Kind of a two part thing. Deleting is pretty straightforward. We import PyMongo. We have some number we're looking for, and we say DB customer, delete one, and the, it's the record that has this key called number, and this is the value I want. So number 99, delete it. And this is the lab that we're going to test this in. So you're looking at two containers running in Docker infrastructure. One container has the Mongo database. The other one has our Flask application. And we're going to um, get to 5004, I believe, is the port number we'll get to. And we'll be able to start looking at working with that Mongo database. Let's dive into the lab. I'm going to open up a terminal window so I can type some commands into it. Basically, the git clone command. So this is just git clone, HTTPS, github.com, xod442. You're going to get the ARAS PyMongo git repository. That's what we're doing. We hit enter there. It's going to download it. And we're going to change the directory to a RAS PyMongo. So we'll save that. We have to come back and start our application. But let's take a quick peek at what's going on with the app. Right? So you can see Docker Compose. Remember, we had that connector we were building. And we had the username and password of the database. Well, if we look in Docker Compose, we can see the user and password right here for the Mongo database. That's where we get it from. So we can go up to our app and get our connector built right here. Connector, that's where we're going to use the admin Siesta 3 and Mongo for the container name. Now we just give them a nice little place to land when they open up the application with a slash. We create a route called home because every time we do a function, we want to come back home. And this just gets all the documents out of the database and puts them in a table using a Jinja2 template. And then we're going to have our first part of the CRUD, the C for create. Now we're going to add customer. Let me show you how this works. Now I'm going to turn the, if I come over here and see this little arrow, I can click it and basically hide that if statement. So this is what happens. When we hit this route the first time, it's an HTTP GET request. So when we check it, the very first time we check to see if it's post, it's not. So just keep on going. And it gets down here and we return a template, a Jinja2 template, where we can collect the information for the database. This is the add customer template that we're going to get and put our information in there and create the document. Now. When we put our information in the, the form that gets offered up, the add customer Jinja2 template, it will come back with a post. And now it's a post. So I can get that information from the form, wrap it up in a Python dictionary, and here I insert one. So you can see I got DB, and then the collection name is called customer, and I'm doing insert one with the entry that we created up here. Make a message. Send it back, more Jinja2 stuff down here, and we render the template for home, build the table, show the records. That's how this works. Listing, we simply go out and get all the records, build the table, and list them. Edit is kind of tricky because if I turn this if statement off, so it's not a post, 
the first time through, we collect all this information from the, from the database, and we're actually taking the number of the document and the name on the document and putting a dash between them so we have something nice to put in the selector wheel. And then we just offer that back up, let them choose their record. Then when they come back, they hit the post, and then they do this. They pull that information, and they, they munge it up a little bit. The, I get the customer here, and I look into that. I can split the, the dash out and get my pieces and go find the exact number of the document I want. And then I can build uh, some more variables here, and I pass those variables there. And what I'm doing is I'm getting the variables out of that document and putting them in a list and offering it up to the user so they can change the values. And when they change the values, they come back for the third part of this, which is the edit customer complete, which we come through and we take those values from the form. We wrap them up in our query. Here's our query where we're looking for a very specific number and we're gonna set this Python dictionary as the values of that document. And then wrap it up here, delete is the same thing. We build a selector wheel at the bottom, come back on the if statement and simply use the delete one. So what does this look like? Cause it's a Flask application, right? So let's go onto our web browser. Oh, before we do, we have to come over here and we have to say Docker because we're using Docker desktop, Docker, compose up up dash d to run it in the background and then that'll go out and bring up our web application and remember we said we didn't know what port it exposed we just simply go to docker desktop there's our containers running right there our mongo container and our application and it's available on port 5001 so if we go ahead and get a browser and we can go out to 5001. We'll go to localhost 5001. And what we're looking at, this application is just plain HTML. There's no sizzle here. So I have no cascading style sheets applied to that application. It's just pure raw HTML but it still works. Down here's our welcome message. If we wanted to add a contact, we can add a Bob. I'm sorry, Bob. I can't spell Bob's name. Bob, J-O-H-N-S-O-N. He's going to be at one, two, three. Now these are just placeholders in there that I'm typing over like that. And we're gonna just use what's there. I'm just gonna give it bob at bob.com. Now that put a record in our database. So you can see I've got, well, I got two Bob Johnsons. I got a problem here. So I need to go up and delete one of these. So I pick delete and I get my selector wheel here and I'll just delete the first one, delete. Now I have one in the database, but uh, his number was 6666. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit that content. I'm gonna pick my record and then I'm going to get that information fed back into the form and I can change or update that record document. I'm sorry, document folks, they're not records, they're documents. Okay, so we're gonna change the document and you can see now it has been updated. I can list what's in our database. We can add more people here. Now, like I said, this isn't very attractive because there's no CSS applied. And in one of our other episodes, when we talked about Jinja 2, we found out that there was a base HTML file in our templates directory. Well, I'm using this base HTML that doesn't have much in it at all. So if I rename that file, rename to, um, I'll call it .x, and I will call it .y rather, and then we'll get the .x and rename it as well. We're gonna make it our base now. And you can see this file has a lot of metadata, but it has links, lots and lots of links to uh, CSS files, Bootstrap and all kinds of really great CSS. And it also has uh, links to JavaScript that we run in here as well, some JavaScript as well. 
So all that's in that. But so what does that do? Simply changing our base template out. What does that do to our application? Let's take a look. Yeah, it looks like this. Yeah, so I can go home up here. You can see on home, I'm building a table, a JavaScript table, and then I can navigate through records to this table. I can go home, add contacts as like that, or edit the contact, and just pick the contact I want and edit the information in this record. If I did that, now this looks a lot better, doesn't it? Hit record update, and we get 8.8 there. So this is how this application works now. This is a great start to an application that we could build that has API calls that gets information from an API and wants to temporarily store it in a database. This is how we store it in a database. So this, this solves your information storage issue. You simply just use PyMongo and start putting Mongo documents in the Mongo database. Now you know how to use PyMongo to manipulate documents in the Mongo database. It's pretty straightforward and pretty simple. So always stay curious, my friends, and remember to Google the error message. Now, in the upcoming episode of the Aruba RESTful Automation Series, we're going to start dealing with the Swagger interface for Aruba Central. That's where we're going to learn about the APIs and what we can do with them and what kind of information we can get. Um, we're going to be logging into a brand new uh, user account on Aruba Central, so there won't be much information there. But what we're going to cover is going to show you the basics of how to get those APIs out of Central and how to deal with them once you get them. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.